good morning in today's video let us learn about the functional areas of brain so what is this functional area so far we have studied only the sulci and gyri which are present in the brain so what is this functional area these are nothing but the areas which are present on the sulci or the gyri which is representing a particular function this need not follow a boundary a particular boundary like example a precentral gyrus having a single functional area nothing like that it can occupy two or three gyrus at once also okay, so it the boundary is not restricted to a single gyrus it can overlap into other gyrus so many authors have formulated different maps they worked out on the cerebral hemisphere and they have made a map mapping system of the cerebral hemisphere to study the functional areas out of which the most accepted and widely used system is the broadman system so we are going to learn about broadman's numbering system broadman's classification in learning the functional areas of brain Broadman's numbering system he has numbered various part of the cerebral hemisphere and he has given number from 1 to 52 these subdivisions and its functions will be dealt in detail in today's video first in our list of functional areas we will study about the motor area motor area should know where this motor area is located first see this is the central sulcus this is the precentral sulcus so in front of the central sulcus we have the precentral gyrus so between the central sulcus and the precentral sulcus we have the precentral gyrus so this precentral gyrus has got the primary motor area area number 4 so this area is a primary motor area which is the area number 4 area number 4 we need to understand till where this area number 4 is extending on its medial aspect so we'll draw a small diagram representing the medial surface of the brain so here in the medial surface of the brain we know there will be corpus callosum which will be connecting the two cerebral hemispheres and we have the cingulate sulcus so just in front of the cingulate sulcus where the we can see the end of the central sulcus on its medial aspect and this lobule is called the paracentral lobule so we can see this is the central sulcus so in front of the central sulcus we have the precentral gyrus which has area number 4 which is the primary motor cortex so this motor cortex also extends in the anterior part of the paracentral lobule so it also extends in the anterior part of the paracentral lobule so this is also the area number 4 so motor area is area number 4 as the name implies the motor area is going to control the motor functions of the body so how this motor function is controlled by this area of the brain so the motor functions are represented in an invert inverted fashion so if you would consider this as the brain on either side so the frontal lobe is a medial aspect is a lateral aspect you can see this is the insula if you consider this as a brain so this area corresponds to this place the superior superior aspect is the inferior aspect and is the lateral aspect so this area which is in the anterior aspect of the paracentral lobule is represented here 
and this area along the lateral aspect of the cerebral hemisphere is represented here so the human body is represented in an inverted fashion the medial aspect represents the lower limb and this superior aspect the superior aspect will be representing the trunk trunk and then followed by upper limb followed by the upper limb so this area will be represented representing the upper limb in the lower part on the lateral view will be representing the head and neck followed by tongue and pharynx and larynx so this is the head and neck followed by tongue pharynx and larynx so this is how it is represented if you follow in this diagram is the medial aspect so this area mainly controls the lower limb followed by the trunk on its superior aspect so followed by the trunk here then followed by the upper limb followed by head and neck and face and the tongue so the human body is represented in an inverted fashion and this representation is called the homunculus homunculi or the homunculus so this way of inverted fashion of representation of the human body on the cerebral cortex is called homunculi one more most important thing we should remember about this homunculi is the regions of the brain representing a particular part of the body is disproportionate like example if you take the region occupied by the trunk on the brain surface which is comparatively very small when compared to the region occupied on the brain for the hand or the tongue or the face so what we have to understand is the amount of the area which is amount of the area which is specified for a particular region does not depend on the size of the particular region but it depends on the on the complexity of the movement which is produced there the complexity of the movement which is produced like example the thumb or the fingers which has the maximum range of movements and which has the which is going to do our complex movements are going to have a larger area on the brain when compared to a region which is not having much of motor functions like example a thorax we don't have fine or complex functions for the motor activity of thorax so the thorax is represented by a smaller area when compared to the upper limb which is having a upper limb that to the hand in front of the primary motor area we have area number 6 which is called the premotor area which is located on the posterior aspect of superior middle and the inferior frontal gyrus as you see the area is wide on the superior aspect and gradually tapers as it goes down and the main function of this premotor area is for the successful performance of the voluntary movements which are carried out by area number 4 so the successful movement for the successful performance of the voluntary movement is by the area number 6 the area number 6 also occupy occupies the medial aspect it also extends the medial aspect in front of the paracentral lobule you can see this is a paracentral lobule the anterior part of the paracentral lobule is occupied by area number 4 and in front of this area number 4 that is in front of the paracentral lobule we have the area number 6 which is extending on its medial aspect and this area can be specifically called as supplemental motor area supplemental motor area it is called as supplemental motor area this supplemental motor area is located in the medial frontal gyrus so this gyrus is the medial frontal gyrus the supplemental motor area is located in the 
medial frontal gyrus. Supplemental motor cortex is actually responsible for the complex movements including the turning of head to opposite like example is turning of the head to the sides and the posture. The next area what we are going to study is the frontal eye field. This frontal eye field is located in the middle frontal gyrus posterior to that of the precentral sulcus. So in front of the precentral sulcus the middle frontal gyrus contains an area called the frontal eye field. So this frontal eye field has the areas area number 6, number 8 and number 9. So the main region of the frontal eye field is the area number 8. So this area which is located in the middle frontal gyrus in front of the prefrontal sulcus, so uh, precentral sulcus is called the frontal eye field. So the main area is area number 8 and other areas which are helping which is also included in the frontal life field is area number 6 and 9. So 6, 8 and 9 is frontal life field and out of that the main area for the frontal life field is area number 8. So if this area is stimulated it will help the eye to move in opposite direction. It helps the eye to move in the opposite direction. This movement is called the conjugate eye movement or the conjugate movements this movement may be associated is also associated with the movements of the head and also the dilatation of the pupil so that is a function of the frontal eye field next we are going to study the functional area in the inferior frontal gyrus if you see the inferior frontal gyrus as we know this is a these are the two ramus of the lateral sulcus this is the anterior and this is the ascending ramus so the area which is in relation to these two ramus are termed as pars orbitalis, pars triangularis and pars opercularis. Now the area number which is corresponding to pars opercularis is area number area number which is corresponding to pars opercularis is area number 44 the area number 44 which is corresponding to pars opercularis and this pars triangularis is represented by area number 45 so the pars triangularis is represented by area number 45 these two areas are together called as broca's area these two areas are together called as broca's area This Broca's area is otherwise called as motor speech area. So what is the function of motor speech area? So the motor speech area is going to vocalization, help in the production of speech, expressive speech. These speech areas are located in the dominant side of the brain. So which is the dominant side of the brain? For a right-handed person, the left side of the brain is dominant. So in a right-handed person, the speech areas will be located in the left side of the brain. Damage to this region causes Broca's aphasia or motor aphasia. So damage to this region will cause motor aphasia. So what is this motor aphasia? Motor aphasia is loss of ability to produce the speech. So actually the person can process the sound and they can think about the word which they need to express. But in the case of damage to the Broca's area, the person can understand very well and he can think about the word he wanted to express but he can't produce the particular word. If, he's, if he wanted to write and give an answer, give an answer, he can correctly write what 
he decided to but there will be a problem in the expression of speech one more thing we have to understand is there is no paralysis of muscles of the lip tongue or the vocal cords the only problem is with the expression he can't express the word but he can write the word on a blank paper if you are giving a particular question the next area what we are going to study is the prefrontal area which is located in front the prefrontal area which is located in front of the premotor area located in the front of the premotor area and the area number which forms this prefrontal area is area number 9 10 and 11 so the 9 10 and 11 so this area is mainly concerned with the individual's personality so it's mainly concerned with the individual's personality so it is also playing a very important role in an ethical behavior so to understand the ethics social behavior and the concentration ability ability to concentrate orientation and also for thinking force a force sightedness for the force sightedness so all these characters are mainly because of the area number 9 10 and 11 if this area is damaged because of a tumor or because of any injury it will result in change in personality it will these kind of patients will have lack of concentration and unethical behavior will be there social inhibition will be lost so that they will perform unwanted things in a social area like uh, uh, wearing improper dress or sometimes they won't be wearing dress at all uh, they won't have any social inhibition example urinating in public so all these kind of behaviors will be seen in case of an trauma to this area the prefrontal area so this is the area which is making us more of a human being to follow the social and ethical norms so these are the functional areas which are located in the frontal lobe so so far what we have studied is the functional or the functional areas which are located in the frontal lobe so in our next video we'll study the functional areas which are located in the other regions of the cerebral hemisphere